Hey guys, it's Camille, and today I'm creating a seamless bright pink to red ombre and finally trying out Brad Mondo's hair dye from his line X Mondo, so let's see what this stuff can do. So this is what we're starting with. I had red hair that grew out and faded a bit, and just bleached my roots in literally one round with the lowest developer I've ever used, so I'll be posting a video on that soon, but this is the perfect base for a bright pink, and you can see that from the roots to the red is a bit of an ombre already from me bleaching the roots, so that's gonna be helpful, but either way, you can use this method to create an ombre on any base that's light enough. First, I'm sectioning my hair in half, and then the other half in half, so it's in workable sizes. And it doesn't matter which section you start with, since it's a color depositing semi-permanent dye, so you don't have to stress about time. To make the ombre seamless, I'm mixing the pink and the red together for a color that's halfway in between. I always start with the light color and add small amounts of the darker color at a time, because making a color look halfway doesn't mean putting equal parts of each color, because that will turn out too dark if you do it that way. Think chocolate milk. Once you have your halfway color, I recommend doing a strand test to double check that the color will show up the way that you want it to. So I grabbed a tiny piece from the back of my hair to test the pink on my roots and it turned out to be a beautiful color, exactly what I was expecting because I always look up swatches instead of just looking at the jar and I also swatch it on a paper towel in advance. The pink is a bit brighter than it looks inside the container and definitely warmer than the label, which looks more magenta slash purpler, so always look up swatches or just watch my videos, thanks! Next, I'm using my halfway shade to blend the middle section into a bit more of a red color to make the transition seamless, and it did exactly what it needed to do. And lastly, I'm using the reds on the ends and it looks perfect, so I'm gonna move on to my whole head. You can see between the roots and the bright red, there is a little ombre going on already, so I'm using that as the fourth transition zone and just putting the same pink on both parts so it ombres itself. But of course, that is optional and just a convenient perk of looking this crazy between colors. I think these colors look great on just one round of bleach without being toned because my hair is light enough for the color to pop and the untoned blonde is warm just like the dyes. My goal is always to do the fewest processes possible on my hair and in the least damaging way, so that's why I chose pink to red because I can utilize and refresh the red ends of my hair without a fading or bleaching process and add a similar color or one next to it on the color wheel and now it's a whole new look that also keeps your hair as healthy as possible. I'm working my way through the sections and slicking them on top of themselves to keep them out of the way while I'm working. I also like to slick it down with more dye to hold it in place and also make sure everywhere is completely saturated. Make sure you get all of the back and that your hairline is fully covered because that part not only frames your face, but is the first part to fade from washing your face, especially if you use acne face wash with benzoyl peroxide like me. Next up is the transition shade and I'm placing that three quarters of the way down and blending it outwards towards the bottom and lightly blending it towards the pink roots without overpowering the color. I feather it downwards lightly so it's easier to blend into the red and prevents the red from overpowering the colors above or making it look blocky instead of a smooth transition. And if you've ever been on TikTok, it's all about flawless transitions these days, so take your time on this and you won't regret it. By the way, I love doing this with my fingers without gloves because I can really feel every detail, which makes it easier for me to be precise and for me to do this myself, especially because when I'm doing the back, I do it mostly by feel. But always wear gloves when doing anything with the bleach or peroxide, because it'll burn you, but all this does is stain for a little while, which I always find fun, and then it fades soon after, and to hide the red stains on my nails for fashion week, I just painted over them, and all the focus was on my hair. Lastly, we're putting the pure red on the ends and blending it into the transition shade. I find this red to be very pigmented and it did the right amount of brightening up my faded ends. I like the texture of the dye and after wearing this for a while I found that it bleeds about average amount that reds do but also stays bright for a really good amount of time. Once you're done, leave it in for 20 to 1000 minutes and then rinse it out in cool water in the shower. 
It honestly doesn't really matter how long you leave it on, just make sure it's at least 20 minutes. After it dried, this is what it looks like. Bright, fresh, healthy, and stunning. I'm obsessed. <laughs> if there is ever a day for Brad Mondo to notice me, this is the day and this is the video, so please tag him if you can. And Brad, if you're watching this, I loved your money piece and wolf cut videos. Think bright blue is your best hair color and I am always down to collab. I live in Brooklyn, please call me. And to everyone else, thank you so much for watching. All of my social media and products are linked down below. I wish you all a happy, healthy life and we'll see you in the next video. Bye!